Hey everybody. So, Papa's got a project for you today. And it is this little guy right here. So, this little guy is a USB dongle that plugs into your computer in Windows or Linux and a wireless receiver for an RC control radio. And what's the purpose of it? Well, the purpose of it is to play simulators and use a controller like this in Windows for a remote control, a game controller. So it's really great for your your simulators, whether they're things like liftoff or or other simulators like that, other RC simulators. So that's a lot of fun. There's one other thing I want to do with this though. I actually want to use this also within Mission Planner and use it to control a drone over 900 megahertz using the telemetry link to uh, APM 2.8 and this APM 2.8 is going to be on this drone that I designed so I did this design in uh, in Blender and then I converted it and I 3D printed it you're going to need is one of these CP2102 USB to TTL serial adapter module USB to UART. So what does this do? This converts a UART signal to USB. Okay. Well, what's a UART signal? So a UART signal, if you've ever done anything with flight controllers on little quads, they're full of UART inputs that go into the flight controller. So that is how you get uh, GPS's and all those sorts of things, cameras, all those sorts of things to interact with a flight controller. So what we have here is a little module that will convert those to USB inputs for a PC. Okay. But we are going to use this one to convert the signal of an RC receiver. You could hook using the uh, trainer port on the back of your controller. You could hook directly to the pins on this and you could just use the two channels. But we want to go wireless to our PC. We don't want to be tethered to the PC because well it's just a lot more fun, right? So uh, we're not too worried about range but we're, we're never within our house we could never get out of range of this thing because if you think about it like how far is the range between between your uh, receiver and your transmitter when you're out flying it's pretty far and you're running on 2.4 gigahertz so it's basically the same thing as uh, Wi-Fi in your house so it's pretty benign it's fairly harmless It shouldn't it shouldn't interfere with too much stuff. It's it's a pretty well established standard. You shouldn't get in any trouble, but it will allow us to get that input into the computer. And the receiver with the software we're gonna use with this can be S bus or I bus or PPM. So it actually covers all the all the protocols so you don't have to use the exact receiver that I'm using you can hook up pretty well any receiver you've got for your transmitter just bind to it and hook it up to this and then in the software you can set it for the protocol you're using much as you would in a flight controller so basically you're making your PC into a flight controller with this but your PC can also run games on it so you end up with your RC controller being a joystick. 
now the other component you will need is a little transmitter of some or receiver of some kind that is compatible with your transmitter. Now I chose to use this one because I got a handful of them for they were used and it was only like 30 bucks for like four or five of them that I got used but even new they're quite cheap you can get them on sale you can see here for you know 10 bucks so I mean this is a pretty cheap project like you're about 15 bucks to have wireless a wireless controller made out of your RC controller but I use this one and it's very tiny and it fits on top of the board really nice and basically I just glued it on top after I ended up bending the pins over onto themselves but as you can see here it's labeled so you have ground VCC and I bus S bus so depending on what protocol you're using you're going to want to put VCC to plus five on your uh, on your CP 2102 and ground to ground and then I bus you're going to want to put to RX not TX RX and then it's pretty basic I mean you just connect the right wires to the right pins based on what I've just told you and then you have at this point you've got a connection once you're bound to this you've got a connection from your receiver or from your transmitter to your receiver and you've got a connection from a wired connection from your receiver to the serial port inputs the RX on the UART side then you plug into the computer so after we plug into the computer we are going to need a couple of pieces of software we're going to need drivers for the CP 2102 and I'll show you where to get those in a minute and you are going to need uh, VJoy and VJoy feeder for software so VJoy is a driver and VJoy feeder is a piece of software that you will open and leave open and that is where you will configure whether you're using iBus or SBus or whatever you're using. And then you're going to have to configure also all of your different inputs and everything within that feeder software. And you'll have to leave it open when you're using it. So it's kind of like a little companion app that you have to run while you're using this. And then that makes all of this into a joystick that's available to your Windows system for use in Mission Planner or use in Liftoff, Velocidrone, any of your plane RC simulators, any flight simulators that you use, pretty much any game. It just shows up as a joystick after you've done this. So I'm going to take a break here and uh, hunt up the software that you've got to download. Okay, so this is the drone that I'm looking at controlling with this after. As well as playing games, of course. This is the uh, one that I designed and 3D printed. I like the design of it quite a bit. I think it turned out really good. So, there's a few things we have to download. One is the CP210X USB to UART bridge VCP driver. This is from Silicon Labs slash developers slash USB dash two dash UART dash bridge dash VCP dash drivers. <coughs> I have asthma. Sorry about that. And the one that you want is the CP210X Universal Windows Driver. So download that and install it. I will assume you know how to download and install a program. And the next one you're going to need 
is from vstick.scourgeforce.net slash site slash index.php slash download dash a dash install slash download and depending on your architecture you're going to want the Windows 10 or the Windows 7, 8, 8.1 or even there's Linux versions of course for all this stuff but I'm concentrating on Windows so I mean most most are x8, x64 architecture this, these days so you just click on this big download square and then download this one and then you install this one so basically this is a driver and the last one is also a driver so you just kinda install them and then forget about them and you just work and the next thing you're gonna need to download is a little harder to find sometimes because you get some, uh, th this ends up lower in the results. This is the Cleric K VJoy Serial Feeder. It's on GitHub. GitHub is a repository, not a suppository, a repository of software that's under development that nerds and geeks use, people like me. But this one is at github.com slash cleric dash K slash vjoy serial feeder slash releases and if you do don't do the slash releases you could end up somewhere else and then when you go down to here the one I installed is the vjoy serial feeder windows version 1.6 vjoy 2.1.9 zip and that ends up being a file that you just download and then you unzip it into a folder on your desktop and then it actually just sits on your desktop and you open the pro the folder and directly click on the exe file to run it and that feeder program is where you will configure whether you're using sbus ibus or these sorts of things and then you actually have to go down the the uh, list and assign all your buttons out and then once you're done all that, then you have a usable joystick in Windows. So then you would go into your gaming software or uh, or your mission planner or whatever, and you would again assign the axes in there and get it up and working with that program. And then that project gives you a nice little wireless dongle that you can use on a drone like this over 900 megahertz across the telemetry link or you can just play simulator on on your desktop so if you follow all the instructions, um, you should be able to put together a nice little dongle like this. Um, I could have made a case for it, but I was being kind of lazy. So all I ended up doing is bending down the pins that are straight on top uh, back towards the USB side of it, and then uh, plugging in the receiver on top of the dongle and then uh, then I took my hot glue gun and hot glued it in place and it actually works quite nicely because the it's quite durable and the hot glue acts as kind of a filter and you can see all three LEDs through the hot glue easily and you can still press the bind button and everything and you don't need to get it what's underneath and I mean, let's face it, dongles get thrown around and beat up and shoved into weird places. Hopefully no place is illegal. And then uh, you end up having a pretty durable little dongle that's very compact like this. And that's about it for this project. So if it helps one of you guys out, 
then that's the only reason I'm doing it. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye.